So today, I'm going to share some of my stories of college admissions interviews, uh, the good, the bad, and the weird, <laughs> and just some of the takeaways that maybe we can see in these stories, um, just to, to give some tips for what you can do before, during, and after an interview to just try and hit things off the best way you can. So here goes. So just as a quick disclaimer, I'll be removing the names of any schools in these stories just to stay away from any drama. So the first tip here is going to be make sure to research your interviewer ahead of time as much as you can. I remember I got the email from the guy, looked up his name purely out of obligation, you know, just to see if I could find out anything that um, I could carry into the interview. And I found out that actually he was a uh, historian. I found like an archive of all of his political philosophy papers and stuff like that. And I tried reading them, skimming them. I didn't understand most of it, but um, kind of I walked away with just the general idea of what this guy is all about. And it was pretty cool. And eventually the day came to meet this person. I was waiting in the cafe super nervously i might add like i was always so anxious before all of these interviews i recognized that this is the, the the person you know he's like approaching me we shake hands i'm like hi nice to meet you all that he sat down across from me and <sighs> i've never met such a strange person before like <laughs> i don't know what to say when i entered into his vibes it was just so off. I, I, that's all I'm gonna say. Like he just had this very cold, standoffish feel to him, as if I'm the one interviewing him. You know, it was just very off. It was like, okay, um, let's do this because I already felt that I can't connect with this person. And honestly, uh, half of the interview was pretty awkward because he just didn't smile the whole time. He was just kind of looking at me in this very strange way, and I was doing my best to like be myself. And I remember at one point the, the conversation turned a little bit because I asked him a little bit about his work and his interests and, and just things like that. And even though he continued to be very cold, I could tell that he was really excited about talking about his work because people people are selfish creatures. We all love to hear our own interests. And when we hear or we meet someone who also likes the same things as us, we automatically we automatically give them a little bit more credit. Uh, as I'm sure you understand. So basically we entered into this conversation and because I'd already read a little bit of his papers, because I already recognized the authors he referenced and the themes that he liked and stuff like that, I was able to just kind of pedal along in this conversation and I wasn't even faking it at one point. At one point it became really enjoyable. Um, and I remember even after the interview, he sent me a follow-up email sending me a link to a paper written by this one thinker who he told me about in the conversation. So this is just to say that you can be faced with a person who off the bat you feel like you have no connection with, this is totally um, doomed from the start, but if you happen to know a little bit about them or if you happen to ask them questions about what they enjoy, you can actually get them to open up more and you'll see how the conversation turns in a more favorable way. My second tip here is going to be actually to know as much as you can about yourself in the sense that um, you really should have a sense of why you want to go to this school. I didn't know this, but I found out a few years later that all of these people who are giving interviews are alumni from that university who opt in. To do this interviewing process like they they opt in to do recruiting basically they are volunteers they like their school so much that they're doing this for free just for the hell of it so with that in mind even if you don't know yet even if you haven't been there even if you're not sure at least do your research that's all i'm saying because my story that connects to this is um when i interviewed to when i interviewed for so i remember it was in a dunkin donuts i was like way too well dressed to be in a Dunkin Donuts but I walked in and I was nervous as usual and I, I met the interviewer eventually he asked me why and me I just kind of gave my answer my answer was uh, it's a great school it has a lot of history behind it I like the area and I can see myself going there I can see myself being there of course 
I said it in a more flowery way than that, but that was the main substance of what I had to say. And not a bad answer, but I admit pretty generic. And I remember this guy, he just looked at me and he said, that can be true about any good school. It was just kind of like, yeah, but <laughs> I really like <laughs> Of course, I didn't say it that way, but the general gist was, sure, you can say that about any school, but I just really would like to go And honestly, at that point, the interview just, <laughs> like, it just was so bad. I remember at the end, he was quite condescending to begin with as a persona, but I was also not the most prepared person under the sun. So, you know, when that collides, it just, you know, <laughs> ends up in smoke, basically. And I remember at the end, he asked me if I had any questions for him, which is something all interviewers do, right? Like, is there anything else you'd like to know? And I always ask interviewers the same thing. Is there any advice you would have given yourself when you were my age? Or is there any advice in general that you would give me? And so that's what I asked the guy. And his answer to me was that he doesn't have any advice to give me because him and I are so different at this point of life. Because he was a student, an international student, and I'm not. And he was studying one thing and I'm studying another. And so for that reason, there's no advice he could give me. And I just was, I felt, I felt so like chewed up at the end of that interview that I just looked at him and said, yeah, I just mean in terms of life, any advice? It doesn't have to be technical, you know? And he just said, yeah, find out what you're good at and start doing it as soon as possible. And I was like, okay. And then he asked me, do you have any other questions? And I just said, no thanks. Sometimes you won't connect with a person no matter how hard you try. However, being prepared, having solid convictions can only help you. And I remember when I walked away from that Dunkin' Donuts table, what he said to me was, I hope you find a school you actually want to go to. And I did. So long story short, if you don't have reasons for why you really, really want to go to a certain school, it's most likely that you don't really want to go there. So this is just something to think about when you're casting out your applications or when you're preparing for an interview. Really think about what's genuine to you. Because I remember at the time, I was like so outraged. Like, how could he say that? How could he make me feel that way? And it's like, I had generic answers at that moment. Maybe if I felt more comfortable with the person, it wouldn't have seemed that way. But more or less, he wasn't so wrong. He wasn't really so wrong. So I don't know what the moral of this story is, but know your, know, not only know your facts, but know your convictions, because it shows. Ask genuine questions. You, you don't always have to be so squeaky clean. Like, actually show the interviewer that you're actually weighing your options. You're actually trying to dig and find out more. And don't just ask a question with a filler. This is an opportunity you have to not only learn more, but also to show what, what kind of thinker you are. So I think we're at point number four, and this point is never throw away a shot and always do your best. So the story that taught me that was I remember I had uh, an interview scheduled. It was a virtual interview. Yes, those did exist before Corona, um, and it was scheduled for after school. And so I was at my school and I figured I could just stay stick by in the classroom and and use my laptop when the time came and had my conversation and that's it. Uh, but all of a sudden I was having major internet issues um, at my high school. I ran across the street to the, the public library and for some reason or another, I still couldn't connect. So I was getting stressed out because I have this interview in like 35 minutes and I can't even connect. And I couldn't just drive home because I couldn't drive. So I was on the verge of just not doing it like just emailing the guy I just felt like i'm not gonna get in anyway so why am i doing this why am i wasting my time having these interviews when it's so likely i'm not gonna get in like why that's how i felt sometimes so yeah i was about to do that but then i figured just i just decided i should do it so i got a, a ride home from someone and I kind of walked away from the experience like okay I mean sure I, I did what I could fine and I actually got in I actually got in you just never know so just do your best and my fifth point 
is to be genuine. And I know that's easier said than done, especially when you're being compared with all these other people. But the reason I say it is because I've had quite a few good interviews and the common thread among all of them is I just felt like I could be myself. Um, and it takes a certain level of feeling comfortable with the person. It takes a certain level of confidence, but I just think it's worth saying. So this is the story of an interview I had with a doctor for a medical program. He took a look at my transcript and he saw that I had AP art history on it. And that's what we ended up talking about for most of the interview. It wasn't about medicine this or medicine that or all that. You could tell that he wanted a break from all of the standard questions that you're supposed to ask and you're supposed to answer. Here I had the opportunity to just talk about something else, talk about something that I deliberately exclude from my application because it's not what people ex like, it's not standard. When he mentioned AP art history, I thought that he was gonna ask, like, why didn't you take AP physics instead? Like, I was so psyched up that I thought that that's what he would say. Like, like, why aren't you more scientifically oriented if you're applying for this program? I actually thought that. But instead, he appreciated the fact that I didn't only have these, like, stacked up stats and, like, all this standard stuff that you're supposed to have when you're entering a certain program or applying for something. So this is just to say that there is a place for things like that. Just read the interviewer and when you get a chance and when you see that they're open to just talking, please be yourself. Talk about, just say something that'll make them laugh. Like, be yourself. My last point is, don't stress it so much. I was not sleeping much those days. Um, so I had an alarm that was set for 4 a.m. I distinctly remember that I got really bored of the old alarms I was using. So to make sure that I actually woke up at 4 a.m., I changed up the alarm from the original default marimba to instead the only song I had on my phone, which was Fake Love by Drake. So um, I had that as my alarm that would go off in the morning. And, you know, I remember I went to the interview and we're talking and then all of a sudden I hear yeah. My alarm was set for 4 p.m. instead of 4 a.m. So yeah. that alarm went off in the middle of my conversation. It went off in the middle of my sentence. It's just not the best moment, but I remember I just, I just shut it off. I just picked up my phone, turned it off. You know, and just kept on talking. I've never been cooler than I was in those five seconds. So yeah, like I like I said before, every single interview that I had, I was always nervous. No matter who it was with, no matter how it went, good, bad, or weird, I was just always a little bit nervous before walking into it. And I remember for this one, I felt no nerves at all. Zero. I just felt like, okay, I'll walk in, talk to her do my best and that's all and the reason for that was because i had attended a funeral earlier that day it was um a, a good friend that i spent a lot of time with in high school her little brother had passed away and we all attended the funeral earlier that day and so after that i was just very sober in the sense that I was even embarrassed by my own vanity of being stressed out over college applications. I just felt like, what a luxury I've been having to be so nervous about applying to college. Um, and yeah, no, I still, the interview went fine. Like, I had a sense of humor. I was myself. I, I didn't show up very... Um, I didn't show up extremely like somber, but just within myself, I had a sense that none of th this is all very frivolous and it is not worth getting stressed about or getting upset about because 
um yeah life is so much bigger than that and i just felt really foolish for getting caught up in that whole chaos which in reality is nothing all so important this is just to say that the more of a step you can take back from this whole thing the better you will do because what is nervousness if not um basically it's like you focus on the fear of things going badly right so if you realize that nothing can really go so bad in this process then you will just walk through everything with a sense of self and and peace and in that way you will actually be who you are when meeting with these people so yeah th that's all i really have to say for now is i know common app and and maybe your teachers and most definitely a, a lot of universities they want you to get wrapped up in all this drama they want you to be all entangled up in the unknown and doing your best and googling on youtube how to do an interview <sighs> take a step back take a deep breath just do your best and honestly you will end up where you're meant to be so yeah i could go on talking about other interviews i've had and what i've learned from them but just to sum up these are the points that stand out the most to me as of now so the first point is to research the other person if you can um and even if you're not able to try to paraphrase what they say to you in the conversation be present be a good listener and you'll be surprised that the fact that you'll get along better if, if you if you do things like that second point is research the the university and and think about your your own interests and what you want to do and that way anything that they ask you um, can't throw you off because you you know what you want to do third point is make sure to ask good questions and not just good sounding questions but also useful ones um fourth point is never throw away a chance you're given because the reality is most things in this whole process really are up to luck so since luck is out of your control the only thing you can do is your best fifth point is read the conversation and don't be afraid if you feel that the the person is open enough and, and curious don't be afraid to say things that don't fit the mold i mean of course use your best judgment but um be, be yourself be memorable and the last point again is don't stress it uh this college admissions feels like it is the entire world but trust me it's it's really not if you just try to be conscious and conscientious throughout the whole process and uh take a step back you'll do way better than you think you can so that's all my advice for now I hope it could have helped. Thank you for watching.